Good morning. It's October 31st, 2012, about 10 a.m. in the morning. And I'm just finishing up my latest project, and I thought I'd share it with you. It is a rocket heater. Uh, I've been wanting to build one of these for quite some time. But this one is a little different in that it can burn uh, several different kinds of fuel. It can burn uh, uh, wood, wood or wood scraps. It can burn wood pellets. But I think its claim to fame is that uh, I built this so it can burn waste oil. Starting at the bottom, there are four legs that are about 11 inches long. Uh, this helps keep the stove up off the floor a little bit so I don't have to bend over quite so far. Uh, the bottom is an 11 gauge uh, round metal plate. On top of that is a donated 40 gallon gas water heater. Um, I gutted it out and saved the outside shell. The burn chamber is a 5x5 five five, uh, metal tube, welded metal tube. It's 17 inches long and extends inside the uh, hot water heater frame. This particular unit uh, that I built has dual cold air draft uh, controls and I can just spin these things out to increase the draft or decrease the draft however I wish and there's one on top and one in front here. Uh, I didn't plan it this way but they look rather nice and uh, they work well too. Both of uh, the drafts are removable uh, depending on what type of fuel I want to use. Okay here we're looking at the lower draft control and I'll remove it. I just slide it up and it comes off. Here's the upper draft control. I can remove that as well. I will set that off to the side and you can see this is how I constructed it. And again it just spins up to control the draft. And I, I found that I really do need uh, dual draft controls depending on the fuel I use. On the bottom here, uh, it's a little involved, but I wound up building a uh, super heavy duty uh, ashtray and burn pot. Um, on top of that, I have a cast iron grate that I cut down from another um, project and it works well. It supports the the wood and lets the ash drop through. Uh, this uh, burn pot slash uh, ash pan is 17 inches long and about 4 inches wide. And this here, I use this when I'm burning oil. It helps disperse the oil across the top and lets it atomize a little better. And atomization is the key to this. Uh, you're burning vapor, you're not burning fluid. Uh, of course, there's the ash pan burn pot all the way back. I've reinforced that uh, this area here where the oil comes in contact with it, that's about uh, 330 seconds thick. So we'll put the pieces back together and slide her back inside. And again, this just slides in like so. And the top control goes back on, draft control. Coming up on the unit, um, it stands about five feet tall. Um, now up on top here, I did not plan this. Uh, but it just works so well, I really couldn't believe it. I had these large tractor trailer brake drums from a, a previous project, my old uh, waste oil burner, and I don't know why, but I just checked and they slipped onto this hot water heater frame perfectly. I didn't have to do any modifications, it just slipped on there like a glove 
and I was tickled to death. So that's where it sits. Uh, I only had to use one. Uh, it weighs 90 pounds and it absorbs a tremendous amount of heat. It, it absorbs and radiates a tremendous amount of heat. On top of that is a half inch plate I had cut and that's welded that to the top of the brake drum. I think in the future I'm going to change this. Uh, I'm going to drill and tap four uh, screw holes and cut the weld so I can take the top off and uh, look inside and inspect. Um, down here is the oil feed. I don't know how well you can see it. If I can change the lighting here just a little bit. That's where I decided to mount the uh, fuel inlet. It comes up and I go to a copper pipe and to my valve control <clears throat> and I realize it's not pretty but it works quite well. I hope I can get this to focus. Um, I don't like having a lot of fuel uh, near this thing. Even the old uh, waste oil burner that I had. I try to keep it about a half a gallon. It lasts a long time. Um, so this is the setup at the moment. If I want to change things, it's, it's, it's easy enough for me to do. And I have a heat shield uh, between uh, the fuel source and the burner. And I find that uh, that container never gets above 90 degrees, uh, no matter how hot this thing it gets. And quite frankly, I've had it above 800 degrees, so it seems to work pretty good. Um, coming down, there's the discharge, and it goes up to my heatilator. Now, I had an, uh, my previous waste oil burner, I had the Ozert style uh, waste oil burner. I had it for two years. Uh, it worked well. The thing I did not care uh, about was, first of all, it limited me to just waste oil. And while I have an abundant uh, supply of uh, waste oil right now, the future I just don't know. So this here allows me uh, at least three different fuels uh, that I can use, wood, uh, pellets, or again waste oil. I did dry, try burning corn in it and uh, the, the clinkers are just uh, problematic and I couldn't get them to burn right. So. For right now, I have three fuels available. Um, the second thing I didn't like about the, uh, the Ozer style heater is that the majority of the heat, no matter how you try, goes up the chimney. Um, and that's why I had the heat later there. Now, with this unit, uh, the heat later may come on once a day uh, if I really stoke this thing up. And when I mean stoke up, I mean the, the stove is in excess of 600 degrees uh, up on top here anyway. And the, before the heat elator will kick in. Uh, so this is absorbing and radiating a tremendous amount of heat. And also, um, when I burn this thing, once I get it hot, when I say hot again, I mean above 300 degrees. I can shut this thing off, close off the draft controls, and that keeps air from flowing through it. And this thing will radiate heat for at least three hours. So it, it's very efficient. And let's see here if I can find something to show you. I have not, I've used this quite a bit, and these pipes just do not get clogged up. They're, they're nice and clean. There's nothing in there. Um, and I found that on the Ozer style, I, I would have to clean the chimneys uh, quite a bit. I say quite a bit, three or four times a year, because they would carbon up quite a bit. And I, I don't find that with this unit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this off for a minute, uh, show you how I started up, and uh, warm things up in here. The temperature right now inside is about 55 degrees. Let's see here. Yes, it is 55 degrees in here. So 
Stand by. Here okay, we go. I have the uh, ash pan uh, removed from the unit. And uh, when I go to light these things, and I'm still learning, I have only had this for a couple of weeks, but whether it's uh, this stove or my, my old Ozert style uh, waste oil burner, when I light these things, I, I don't want to have to sit here and babysit these things for 10 or 15 minutes. I've seen some other uh, videos out there, and it, that's just not for me. When I come in here and it's 20 degrees, I want to I have some heat, and I don't want to have to sit here and babysit this thing. So, with that said, you can see I have uh, a couple old pieces of paper towel and a, one sh half a sheet of newspaper uh, rolled up and put in the bottom. Uh, and actually, I'm going to try something new uh, here today. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, cast iron grate on top. And I haven't tried this before, but this is one of those man-made logs, just a piece I broke up. I'm going to set that on top of there. And here's that uh, oil dispersion uh, grid that I have set on the back here. And this is about three ounces of kerosene. That's all I use. I'm going to just pour that over the top. Okay. And I'm going to do this one handed. This is a heavy puppy. Slide that inside. Get my draft control here. Get draft control. Slide it and she's set. I gotta wipe my hands off here.